Hey everybody, um, I want to walk through some multiplying multi-digit factors with you. And uh, the first example we have here is 23 multiplied by 54. Now, one of the strategies I really like is the array. And uh, that's because it really helps you see what you're multiplying um, each factor by. So I'm going to start out by drawing my array, and it just looks like a rectangle. And um, I'm going to take a look at my first factor here, 23. And I'm going to break 23 up into 20 plus 3. And that's the expanded form for 23. And so I'm going to draw a little line here that separates the 20 from the 3. And now I'm going to focus my attention on the other factor, which is 54. And I'm going to write the expanded form of 54 off to the side here, 50 plus 4. And once again, I'm going to separate the 50 from the 4. And so now you see we've created a rectangle that has four areas or four spaces. And so in order to solve our multiplication problem here, um, we're going to have to solve four smaller multiplication problems. So I'm going to start with this 50 here. And I'm going to multiply that 50 by the 20. And I'm going to multiply that 50 by the 3. But Where do those two problems go? Well, in this first box in the top left, I'm going to multiply 50 by 20. And let me back up just a little bit to make that 20 look a little nicer. And then in the next box, I'm going to multiply 50 by 3. And once again, I'm going to try to make a better looking three. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to first figure out what 50 times 20 is. Now, figuring out what 50 times 20 is is going to be a lot easier if, for the moment, we forget about these two zeros. So we're going to forget about the zero and the 50, and we're going to forget about the zero and the 20. And so now I'm just going to multiply 5 by 2. And that's a lot easier to find out. So we know 5 times 2 is 10. But I'm not multiplying 5 by 2. I'm multiplying 50 by 20. And since between the two factors, 50 and 20, I have two zeros, I'm going to put two zeros behind my 10. And so now we see that 50 times 20 is actually 1,000. All right, so let's take a look at 50 times 3 in the next box. Well, once again, I have a 0, and so I'm going to make this problem a bit easier on myself by figuring out first what 5 times 3 is. And 5 times 3 gives us 15. And But once again, I'm not multiplying 5 by 3. I'm multiplying 50 by 3. So I have to add a 0 behind my 15. And so 50 times 3 gives you 150. And putting the zeros back is really important. And it's one of the areas that students make a mistake in. And then that messes up their product. So it's really important that we don't make any mistakes while we're working this out. All right, so I just multiplied my 50 by 20 and 3. So I'm done with my 50 fac factor. Now I'm going to drop down to my 4, and I'm going to multiply 
4 by 20 in this space or box, and I'm going to multiply 4 by 3 in this space or box. So taking a look at 4 times 20, I'm going to color in the 0 in 20 because I know 4 times 2 is an easier problem than 4 times 20. And 4 times 2 gives me 8. But once again, since we colored a 0 in, we need to add that back to our product. So 4 times 20 is 80. And last, we have to figure out what 4 times 3 is. And that's just 12. So now I have four partial products. I have 1,000. I have 150. I have 80. And I have 12. And what I have to do with my partial products is I have to add them up. And once I add them up, sorry about that. Once I add them up, uh, I'll have uh, my product. So I'm going to add my 150 and my 12. And it's so important that when you're adding, that you're getting your digits lined up. So that your ones place digits are lined up, and your tens place digits are lined up, and so forth and so on. So in 150, oh, I'm sorry, added to 12, we have a zero in the ones place and a two in the ones place. So that gives us a two in our sums one place. And then we're going to add the 5 and the 1 in the tenths place, which gives us a 6. And then we're just going to bring that 1 in the hundreds place straight down. So I added the partial product 150 to the partial product 12. And I got 162. But I'm not quite done yet because I still have to add my 1,000 and my 80. And once again, I'm really being careful about lining my digits up. So 1,000 plus 80 is going to give us 1,080. And so now all that's left to do is to add these two sums together. And that's going to give us our product. So I have a little bit of space off to the right here of my array. So I'm going to add those two sums over here. So I have a 0 and a 2 in the 1's place, so when I add those, I get a 2. I have an 8 and a 6 in the 10's place, and when I add those up, I'm going to get 14 10's. So I'm going to add, put the 4 down here and carry um, my 1 up into the 100's place. And then 100 plus another 100 gives me 200. And then that one's going to come straight down. And so we did it. We figured out what 23 multiplied by 54 is. So I'm going to write that in big, big green numbers here. So 1,242. Let's put a big circle around it. We'll put a big circle around the same answer over here, and don't forget the comma. So uh, what does 23 times 54 equal? Equals 1,242. So let's go back and retrace our steps here. The first thing we did in this problem is we recognized that we're multiplying 23 by 54.
We broke up the 23 into 20 and 3. And we divided the 20 from the 3. So we made two separate spaces for the 20 and the 3. And then next, we broke up the 54 into 50 and 4. Again, we separated the 50 from the 4. And that gave us four spaces to solve four different smaller multiplication problems. So we figured out what 20 or 50 times 20 is and 50 times 3. And remember when we did that, we colored our zeros in to help us solve an easier problem. But it's really important that we add those zeros back once we figure out the answer to the smaller multiplication problem. So for example, in 50 times three, we had to figure out what five times three is, which is 15, but we had to remember also to put the zero behind the 15 so that 50 times three equals the correct answer, which is 150. Next, we multiplied four by 20 and four times three. And we got 80. And 12. Now the last step is we have to add all the partial products together. And our partial products are 1,000, 150, 80, and 100, or I'm sorry, and 12. So we would have to add all those partial products up, and that's how we got our final product. So I did a lot of adding down here. And I was really careful to make sure that I lined up all my digits. Because a lot of times where students make a mistake isn't when they're multiplying. It's actually when they're adding. So it can be kind of frustrating sometimes for students when they spend all that time working on their multiplication and they get it all correct, but then they make a silly mistake at the end. So you want to make sure you double check your work. And finally, we got the correct product, which was 1,242.